I am stood next to the Lays of Marley Stone Circle, which is situated near to the town of Blairgowrie in Perthshire, Scotland. In the later Neolithic period, the inhabitants of Britain had begun creating these mysterious stone circles and henges throughout what is now known as the British Isles. But why and by who? And furthermore, what was their function and connection to the inhabitants and the landscape that they inhabited? I think it's prudent to give a brief backstory as to how these mysterious monuments that have existed on the British Isles for thousands of years came to be. That story alone is utterly fascinating and allows for a deeper understanding of the people who would eventually erect these structures all over the British Isles. Britain has been visited and occupied intermittently by several species of human hunter-gatherers for nearly a million years. The earliest evidence that has been found so far was discovered at Happisborough on the Norfolk coast. Evidence was found of stone tools and footprints believed to have been made by Homo antecessor around 900,000 years ago. There is also evidence of Neanderthals having lived in Swanscombe in Kent around 400,000 years ago. Now, life in Britain has been in a constant flux with the weather changing from one extreme to another, making life very difficult for these hunter-gatherer groups. During the last ice age, the temperatures fluctuated and ice sheets grew and shrunk repeatedly with a kilometre of ice covering the land of Britain and Ireland at several points in Britain's ever-changing climatic history. This would make living in these regions impossible for any length of time due to the dramatic changes in the climate and an ever-dwindling animal population being available for these hunter-gatherer groups. However, this was not to last. 11,700 years ago, the Ice Age went into retreat and humans once again walked across the landmass known as Doggerland, which connected Britain to Europe. Now, Doggerland is believed to have been inhabited for thousands of years with its access to abundant prey species and fishing grounds. It would make an ideal place for hunter-gatherers to occupy and stay. This land over time began to be affected by ever-rising seawater and perhaps eventually reduced it to low-lying islands. The people who lived on this landmass were about to experience a catastrophic episode in the world's history. This would be called the Sterega Slide. Around 8,000 years ago, 700 cubic miles of Norway's coastal shelf collapsed into the sea following a subsea earthquake that caused a cataclysmic tsunami which would submerge Doggerland, the land bridge, under 20 metres of water. This created the archipelago of Britain and Ireland, forever cutting off the land passage to Europe. Now, to give context to the sheer amount of material that fell into the sea on that day, it's estimated that it would be enough to cover the entire landmass of Scotland in 25 feet of slurry. An unimaginable event. The hunter-gatherers who were now stranded on this archipelago would go on to become the first indigenous settlers of the islands. These fully modern human groups would for thousands of years continue their subsistence lifestyle until around 5000 BC when a large influx of people emigrated to Britain and brought farming and agriculture with them. This would eventually herald in the beginning of the Neolithic period which translates as the New Stone Age.
Around 2,000 to 3,000 years ago, the descendants of the Neolithic settlers began creating groundworks and monument building, such as the stone circle that was created here and at places such as Stonehenge. It's believed that a wide variety of Neolithic farming communities created these monuments throughout the British Isles, including Orkney. There was a long-held belief that mainly came down to us from the Victorians that it was the Druids who created monuments like Stonehenge. This is completely untrue. The Victorians based much of the prehistories on the writings of Julius Caesar, who wrote of the Druids and that they had occupied these lands and therefore it made sense to these early archaeologists and historians that these monuments were built by them. The earliest accounts of Druids in Britain dates back to the 1st century BC and perhaps were here within ancient communities before that date. To move stones like these requires organisation by complex and ordered societies. The motivation and labour involved in moving heavy blocks of stone from one place to another suggests that it was important to these Neolithic farmers to create these monuments. The reason behind the construction of these monuments is unclear, but many historians feel that stone circles such as at the Lays of Mali might have been to commemorate the dead or to give prestige to the organiser. Circles of stone or wood are not rare in Britain from this period and indeed they would likely have been used as defining special ritual spaces in the landscape. Stone circles and henges such as Stonehenge in Wiltshire, England are not to be confused as the same thing. They can certainly look similar with the stones arranged in a circle, but this is where the similarities end. Stonehenge is defined as an enclosure, not because of its standing stones, but because of its location within a ditch and a bank. Ground penetrating radar had revealed hundreds of burial mounds within the vicinity of Stonehenge, in what has been speculated to be a processional path through the site. Professor Mike Parker Pearson, who is a lead archaeologist at Stonehenge, you might actually remember him from the series Time Team. Well, he believes that the Neolithic people who built Stonehenge had origins from the Mediterranean. He says they would have been dark-skinned Neolithic farmers who would eventually go on to colonise Britain in this period. Clearly, the idea for stone circle and henges originated somewhere and spread throughout Europe. Some archaeologists believe that the Ring of Brodgar on Orkney might have been where the first stone structure of this type was built. The difficulty in asserting this claim is that there has been so much overlap with other structures having been built in the same location over thousands of years that it's nearly impossible to be conclusive on the original date of one structure or another. I'm sure it hasn't escaped your notice that the Lays of Marley stone circle has a road running right through the centre of it. In fact, it's the reason why I'm walking in a field rather than on the road itself. Clearly at some point in the distant past, a roadway or path was created here and it was decided that the best course of action was to build it directly through the centre of the stone circle. Later again, a tarmac road was laid here and is very much in use today. Apparently some of the stones were moved to allow this road to be widened for traffic. And although I understand the need for modern infrastructure and networking of the roads that we all use today, this is something I personally find to be disrespectful to our ancient ancestors and to their beliefs. Now, nearly all of our modern roads run along ancient trackways that were created at some point back in the past. And so I guess the Lays of Marley Road is no exception. I don't know about you, but whenever I visit castles or historical sites such as the Lays of Marley Stone Circle, my imagination runs rampant. 
While I was filming here, I tried to imagine the people who stood here thousands of years ago creating this monument and trying to understand how they thought, how they communicated with one another and how the landscape would have looked here in the distant past. Where I'm standing right at this moment, perhaps one of the boulders was picturing in his or her head the finished stone circle in their imagination. Maybe there was a fire right next to me, cooking food for the people who constructed the circle. Maybe even the laughter of children as their elders toiled placing the stones here. And maybe, just maybe, one of these people was an ancestor of mine. Perhaps an ancestor of yours from the very distant past. What would they have looked like? It's fun to speculate and let your imagination fly. I'm standing next to a stone circle that was created by those early inhabitants of Britain with a long and interesting history of their own to tell. A far longer story than I could hope or even qualified enough to give here in this short video. As I've said in some of my other videos, if I could time travel back and watch like a fly in the wall the creation of the stone circle, to observe the people who created it and perhaps gain an insight into what they believed, what gave them the motivation to create these monuments, what a fantastic and mystical experience that would be. I think what would be most striking about that is that these early farmers who were here long before the creation of cities and the world that we live in today, they would be just like us, like me and you, fully modern human beings with similar thoughts and questions that we still battle with today. What is life and its purpose? Why am I here? In the darkness of night, what are the lights in the sky and how did they get there? What is my place in the universe? And where do our loved ones go once they have died? I think all those questions and more explain why our ancestors created these beautiful stone monuments and why we are still drawn to them and find them fascinating to this day. If you've enjoyed my video, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. And I want to thank you for watching.